we see here <coughs> the, pro the flesh profits nothing. Because of sin, no one is good. None is good, Matthew 19, 17 says. None is good save one that is God, Luke 18, 19. Luke 16, 15 says, For that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. What do we, brethren, what do we really have to offer God? What have we ever done that we could say, here, I'll give you this. I have something to offer you. When you think about it, nothing. Paul said in Philippians 3, he counted all things but dung that he may win Christ. Because if you're going to be able to stand before God, you have to be with Christ. That's right. Because without Christ, we've got nothing to offer. Mm -hmm. Nobody. It doesn't matter who you are. You, you're nothing without Christ. Mm -hmm. If anyone had something to offer the flesh, in the flesh, it was Paul. But he said it was it basically, it was garbage. What I had was garbage compared to Christ. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. I mean, when it came to doing everything right, from the time he was young all the way, he did it to the T. So if somebody had something to offer, it would be Paul. And he, he's saying, I didn't have anything to offer. My goal is to win Christ. Is there anyone who, if you're honest, really could rise up on their own righteousness and judge or condemn others? I mean, if you're honest about it, can you, is there somebody here that could do that? Is there anybody ever that could ever do that? Only a fool would cast the first stone. Jesus gave opportunity for men to judge a woman with their own righteousness. We see that in, the, in John 8. 1, it says, And early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him and sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees, now if anybody could do this, it was them, they lived upright, and in the eyes of all men, they lived upright, holy lives. On the outward appearance, they were polished. They were doing what seemingly was the, the most that you could do on your own. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in his midst, they said unto him, Master... This woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law condemned us, that commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down. And with his finger, he wrote on the ground as though he didn't even hear him. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again, this is more than just a hi, gotcha. The Lord put this here to show us. He's teaching us here something. And again, he stood, stooped down and rolled on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, 
went out one by one, beginning with the eldest, who obviously had done more, even unto the least, who wasn't wise enough to just t drop the stone and take off right away. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto him, Woman, where are those thine accuse accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Go and do whatever pleases you that makes you happy. Just continue into your sin and live a ungodly life just as, you, just as long as you're happy. Just as long as you're happy, I'm going to love you anyway. Now, that's not what he said to her. That's right. Let's pay attention to what he says here. He says, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Amen. See, only Jesus can do this. Yeah. Only Jesus can say, go and sin no more, because he has the power to give you to go and sin no more. See, because of Jesus... That woman can go and sin no more. She can stop it right there. Yeah. That's what Jesus can do. He can make it so that you can stop. You don't have to, you don't have to gradually taper off. Right. You don't have to go through a program. You don't have to spend a bunch of money going to a psychiatrist or somebody to help you. Jesus can give you the power to cut it off and go and sin no more. He would not tell that woman to go and sin no more unless he had the power to send her away and go and sin no more. That's what Jesus can do. He can make it so you can go and sin no more. <clears throat> but we see here, if anyone could have cast that stone, it would have been these men. Jesus positioned himself so he could, he could teach us here that if anybody could do it, they would have been able to do it. And they dropped their stones and took off. They couldn't do it. They were convicted of their own conscience. <laughs> they needed a savior too, brother. That's right. mm -hmm. She needed a savior, and they needed a savior. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter who you are, we need a savior. And this is what the Lord's teaching us here that we all need a savior. You're not going to come to Jesus until you figure this out. If, if you listen to the psychiatrists and the people of the day that says, oh, everybody's got a little good in them. Everybody's good. Everybody, yeah. It doesn't matter who you are. God loves you just the way you are. God doesn't love you just the way you are. He wouldn't send his son to die for you if he loved you just the way you are. He would, he would go all, through all the trouble and Jesus wouldn't have to do all the suffering yeah. if God loved you just the way you are. He doesn't love you just the way you are. He loves you in Christ Jesus. Yeah. If you're in Christ Jesus, you have the righteousness of God. It's God's righteousness that you have to have. Not your righteousness. Your righteousness is filthy rags. No matter how good you think you are, it's no good for God. Not for his standard. Maybe for your standard. Maybe for the standard of the person beside you that may be living a little bit in your, in your eyes. The person beside you may not be living as good as you. So by that standard, you're doing pretty good. But now we're talking about God's standard. The righteousness of God. See, the best the Pharisees could do was to polish up the outside. But they still had a problem. <clears throat> they needed a Savior to change the inside. The whole needed to be changed to be acceptable to God. To others, they looked good, but not to God. We're talking about, brethren, being prepared to stand at the judgment seat of God. The throne of God is what we're talking about. We are building up to a day when everyone is going to be at the throne of God. And what are they going to have to say when they're at the throne of God? 
look at what I have done or I'm with him. You want to be able to say, I'm with him. The one on your right, that's the one I'm with. Because on your, on your own merit, fear and trembling, and you have, you can, there's nothing that you could say. There's no excuses that you could come up with. You're without excuse. You have no excuse when you stand before God. So you just have to ask yourself, are you as good as God? Is your righteousness side by side with God? You're as good as God? If you say no, you need a Savior. We must be righteousness, righteous to stand before God, as righteous as God is. <clears throat> Who can say at birth they were clean? At the time that they were born, they had no sin. Who could say that? As a child, they had never sinned. Or as a teenager, as a dog, etc., etc., no sin. To be acceptable to God, you must be able to say just that, that your birth was perfect, you're clean, you're clean on the inside. Your nature, your nature is just like God's nature. Your righteousness is just like his. But there's no one that could say that. If you can't say that, you need a savior. God will not hear your excuse on why you live the way you did without his son, Jesus Christ. No matter what people say, God loves you anyway. God loves you no matter what. If you're standing there before, before God without Christ, he's not going to hear you. He's going to send you off and gnash your teeth in the darkness of dark. You're, you're done. So what are we talking about here? We're preparing to meet God. That's what we're doing here, brethren. Some live good lives, clean, upright, outstanding citizens. They give their time and money to the poor. They help and love people. They're just people. They love all those. Just love everyone. This is what they'll tell you. I love everyone. That's not even possible. You don't have the capacity to love everyone. Right there, you're lying, you're sinning, you're going to go to hell. Right there, right? Just for saying that. You've just lied. Again, if there were any people ac acceptable, it would have been the Pharisees, and they were not. <clears throat> they would have said, look, I have done all things that I was told to do from a youth. From the youth up, I've done all things right. I've followed all the commandments. I've given to the poor. I've done all these things. But when Jesus came up, when, the, when God was on the scene, they wanted to kill him. That doesn't sound like they were very thankful to me. They, this is the way flesh, even if it's polished up, he wanted to kill the Son of God. They rejected Jesus Christ. God will reject them and give them no excuse. <coughs> they may think, today we have people that think that they are uh, live a life that is upright. They even they have people that even show up to church. They even have a shirt that says I love Jesus on it. A Jesus bumper sticker, a Jesus keychain. They may even have a coffee mug that says I love Jesus. But what Jesus are they talking about? Yeah, that's right. The Jesus of the scriptures or the Jesus that they have made up for their own life to be comfortable in this life. A Jesus that excuses their ungodly behavior. A Jesus that accepts them for just the way they are, even though they live ungodly. See, that's not the Jesus we're talking about. 
That's not the Savior we're talking about. The Savior that we're talking about will say, now go and sin no more. That's right. I, I'm not going to condemn you. Go and sin no more. Because if you're with Jesus, you're not going to sin. He gives you the power to do it. He gives you the tools that you need. The closer you live to Jesus, the more you're going to be like God. And that's the only thing that's acceptable. You're not going to get into, you won't be in glory and be unlike God. No one's going to be in glory and stay for very long that's not like God. So we know we need a Savior. See, these people, they really have no desire for the gospel of Jesus. They judge others while they themselves need righteousness. The righteousness of God we're talking about. Not just a, not just a, uh, uh, just a, just a, a small bit of, hey, I think I'm righteous in my own sight. We're talking about the righteousness of God. You know, if I had two cups here, and one was real pretty and polished up, and I had another one that's, all rusty and nasty, and it's got some mold on the outside of it. And I take a, a thing of poison and pour it into one cup and then pour it into the other cup. Which cup would you drink out of? You'd say, they're both full of poison. I don't want either one of them. They're both no good, but that one looks pretty. No, they're both no good. Neither one of them is any good. It doesn't matter if you polish up the outside. And make it look good. The inside nature mm-hmm. still needs to be changed. Amen. We need to be like God. We have to have a heart that God has changed. A heart that is a heart for God. A heart that loves the things of God. That hates the things of the world. And so for someone to say, well, yeah, I know I, I live an ungodly life. But I love, I love Jesus. I was baptized and born again. Now, I'm thinking of somebody in particular that I had talked to one time that they did this. I was talking to them, and they said, you can't, and they said this about the scripture we're talking about here, you can't judge me. No, without Christ, you are already judged. God has judged you. The outward appearance is just, just showing what's going on in deeper. I mean, like we're talking about, you could even polish it up and make it look good, but the inner is still the same. The fact is, the reason some people are just outwardly ungodly is just that's what's going on on the inside. Some have suppressed it so that nobody sees it, but eventually it's going to come out. It's all the same. It's sin. And sin had to be dealt with. That's where Jesus comes in. Because without sin being dealt with and we couldn't do anything about it, God couldn't have anything to do with us. God needed Jesus and we need Jesus. Our righteousness had to be from God. Our nature must be changed. When our nature is changed, we want what God wants. Our our God will have nothing to do with unrighteousness. So we want the righteousness of God. We have to have the righteousness of God to be with him. Paul knows this all too well. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees, so he knows You could do everything to the T. And still, there's something inside of him saying, within me, something needs to be changed. He knew this. If it was possible to be righteous by your own good, on your own good deeds, Paul could have said, look at me, I did it. But he's saying, look at me, I know I need a savior and so do you. But without Christ, the flesh will just continue to grow. You just give it room, no matter if you polish it up or not, it's just going to grow. 
But the closer we are to Christ, the more we are like God. It doesn't matter who you are or how good you look on the outside. The further you are from Christ, the more you will not be like God. You will not have his righteousness. And we are comparing ourselves to God. So we, see, we can see right then when we compare ourselves to God, we come far short. Yeah. One can say, but look how good I am. Look at all the good things I do. Compared to who? Yeah. Uh -huh. Who are you comparing your good deeds to? Others around you who are evil in an evil day? That's who you're comparing to? Compare it to God and see how it stands up. We must have a new nature. A clean heart. It's just, this doesn't come from what church you go to or how many doors you knock on to tell them about Jesus, how much wealth you have or how healthy you are, how you dress, what goes into your mouth, etc., etc. These things aren't what we're talking about. We're talking about Jesus. We need Jesus if we're going to be acceptable to God. Amen. Through Jesus... And only in him and being close to him, <clears throat> we have righteousness of God. So some would say, I, I may live an ungodly life, but Jesus, I still, God still loves me just the way you are. That's foolishness. Because mm -hmm. God doesn't love you apart from Jesus Christ. If you say you love Christ, you're going to be changed. And you're not going to be the same again. You're not going to be like the Pharisees, polished up, but still no good on the inside. You're not going to be like the, the bum on the street that has no care for anybody around them, is self-centered and selfish. You're going to be changed. See, this is what happens when you, when you live for Christ. He changes you. All area of your life, from the inside out. You're going to see a change on the outside. You can't tell me that you live like hell, but you love Jesus. You're not going to live that way if you love Jesus. You're going to be changed from the inside, and it's going to come out. Just like you can't. It is a great deception to think for one second that your righteousness is as good or at the same level as God. At the very core of man, they're no good. Sin has affected men at the very core. From the day they were born, born into sin. God gave the Jewish people all advantages, but their nature wasn't changed. Jesus said to the Pharisees, they were like whitewashed tombs. Matthew 23, 27 through 28, they looked good only on the outside, but they had to be, their nature had to be changed. We know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think thing, this, O oh man, you who judge those, those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God. No one's going to escape the judgment of God. So if you're not changed from the inside out, there's no escape for you. It doesn't matter who you are. God is a just God and cannot go against his own nature. Justice will come. All will stand before the, his throne. You can get so busy, caught up in doing even church things and things that are so important that you can forget. We have a throne that we're heading to. We're on a journey to a throne. And we have to give an account for why we did what we did. We need a savior. But it is really a blessing to remember that we do have a throne that we are coming to. That we are fighting now to stay close to Christ. But soon there's not going to be any more fighting, brethren. We're going to be with our God. We're going to stand at that throne acceptable because of Jesus Christ. So we fight now. 
We fight now to push away the world, to crucify the flesh, to stay close to Jesus because we have a reward up ahead of us. What does this do, brother, when you, we talk about things like this? It turns our eyes to Jesus. It turns us away from the things of the world that have nothing to offer us, that only can pull us down, and turns us to the one who can. He does have the power to change us. As we understand that sin could not be overlooked, our attention is drawn by the atoning death of Christ and how God needed Christ and we need Christ also. What will matter when we are at the judgment seat of God if we don't survive? What, what good things that we did, does any of this going to matter if we don't survive the throne? Without Jesus, we will not survive God's judgment. God made Jesus to be a sin for us, 2 Corinthians 5.21. We need Jesus. Our God, will give, our God will give you over to what is not acceptable in the eyes of the Lord if you do not have Christ. Eventually, that's what's going to happen. In chapter 1, remember, God will turn them over. He'll turn them over. See, the fact that you haven't been turned over right now gives you thanksgiving. Yeah. We could give thanks right now that we haven't been turned over and that we have opportunity now to, to come to Christ, to stay close to him. The wrath of God is against all unrighteousness and ungodliness of men, Romans 1.8. 1, 8. If there comes a time for whatever reason someone stops their quest for God, He'll, he's going to give them over. It may be to be a sodomite or it may be to be a person that is just cut off from the truth. They may be shined up and look good for everybody around them, but they're still cut off. The same is for both. Those who is blatantly outward against God and that, that one who lives a seemingly good life on the outside, without Christ, they're cut off. And they're not acceptable. So to us, brethren, as we see that there is a destruction ahead for those who deny Christ, let us today live our lives wholeheartedly for Christ Jesus. To give ourselves to do those things which must be done to cut our lives off from this world. Thank you, brother.